Hi, Ben here with Amtex Equipment. This is a very short introductory and operational video giving you a tour around your uh, all new Marine 3047. Uh, this unit is pretty much is the infernal design except it's got a boiler in the back instead of the um, heat exchangers. One of the main areas as far as prior to uh, startup, make sure you check your oil level, which the engine takes two quarts of 10W30 to be filled. As far as draining the oil, there is a hose here, which you can simply use it to drain it. Uh, it takes a 7-8 to secure the coupling and 11-16 to remove the plug. Of course, after you drain it, go ahead and put some Teflon back on the plug and put it back in. Your pump could be serviced and drained as far as the oil by this hidden hose, which you use a 3 quarter to secure the coupling and 9-16 to loosen, remove the plug, drain the oil. Uh, and replace it with 14 ounce of SAE 30 or straight 30. Now, once you get this machine, this machine has already gone through its oil change breakup, which is only two, uh, three or four hours that we do run them. We do drain the oil and then we restart them with new batch of oil. So now, your patterns as far as changing the oil is going to be every 50 hours on the engine. And of course, the first 50 hours you do the first oil change on the um, on the pump. Then you leave the pump alone for about good 400 hours, but you do change your oil on your engine every 50 hours on time. But always make sure you check the oil level in the pump, even though you're not gonna be changing it for 400 hours after first oil change of 50. But do check up on the, um, uh, the level of it, which you can use this dipstick in the back. It's a black dipstick in the back of the pump as you unscrew it and take it out. And once you touch the tip of it, you should be able to see a droplet of oil on your, um, on your uh, finger, your uh, blower takes 14 to 16 ounce of gear oil, 75W90. This is where you fill it. This is where you drain the old oil. And of course, this is where this is a level as, as you put the new oil back in. As soon as the oil comes out of here, you put the plug back on. This right here is to lubricate your blower after the whole after the daily job is done. The, the, at the last job, it's always good to run about five seconds of WD-40 or any kind of lubricant while the machine is running through this uh, port. Now, as far as the starting it, let's go back around. Once you get this machine, it is already set up, ready to go, except a couple of valves need to be adjusted because during the shipping, they might get out of adjustment. So what we have done, we have turned the uh, water on. So first, once you get this machine, after you install it, remove the top of the tank by loosening these two stainless steel unions take the top part off now if you come around you'll be able to see only one hose goes to the um, tank which is designated as a dripper valve and now if you follow that hose it's gonna go to that yellow handle valve right there so what we're gonna do we're going to show you how to start the machine and while the machine is running we're going to go ahead and set up that valve um, to a small dripping into the um, into the tank that way you allowing the water to continuously arrive from the pre uh, garden hose or the uh, water supply source and go through the machine because you do have that giant heater in the back that it is extremely hot and powerful so you by you allowing a small amount of water leaving out of the unit all the time from the yellow handle dripper valve which i'm about to show you how to adjust it you allowing the garden hose water to slowly go into the machine even if you're not using the machine go through the pump which is a circuit between your regulator, pressure regulator, and your pump, and always the water to go away from the pump through the heater, right and back up into the heater and cause any kind of problem with the seals. If you follow that dripper valve and having a slowly um, draining the tank, this machine can simply run till it runs out of gas. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna show you how to start it. Every machine comes in with a, a jumper hose, which is a combination of male quick connect, um, a ball valve and of course a hose. What is this for? Because what, what this is, every time you turn this machine on, you do have some of the water inside of the plumbing gets drained out. So you do get a gulp of air going in. So as far as starting it, you want to make sure 
that you drain all the air out of the system. How? By simply connecting this hose to the front end of the machine. You'll be able to see the water start pouring out because I do have my valve open. This is only prior to startup. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and start the system. Pretty much we're gonna show you how to set up the, um, the drip valve. Then from there, show you how to speed it up to turn the heat on. And then from there, you know, we, um, we're just gonna go over a couple of more points and say goodbye from Houston. Now, we're gonna go ahead and um, turn the machine on just like the Infernos. You do have your engine panel in the front. This is your um, uh, ignition key. Here is your throttle, which is straight, pointing straight forward, and your choke handle is uh, pointed upward. Now, going over the quick uh, features in the front, here is your exhaust of the engine, completely made from stainless steel. And here, this is your pressure pump off and on. That means once you turn this on, if the key is on, you should get a yellow light coming on, but by turning this toggle switch on, you'll be able to hear the, the clutch engaging, if you bring the camera this way. As I'm turning off, turning the toggle switch off and on, the magnet inside, if you notice, is moving and, and engaging. The only way for this magnet to engage, water has to be available. That means if, for whatever reason, there is no water turned on towards the machine, for safety, the pump clutch will not start. So that way, the operator error as far as damage the pump is zero. We're gonna go ahead and start it right now. So if we already have drained our system free of air, we're gonna take our, either leave it on or just uh, have the uh, valve shut. We're gonna go ahead and move the throttle and the choke handle all the way to the right. Just like the Infernos, move the throttle a little bit to the left, move the choke all the way to the left. As you're cranking, open the choke. Now, just like the Infernos again, if the engine is extremely cold, do not open the choke all the way. Bring it to the center, allow the engine to start running rich, rich you'll be able to see rich uh, fume coming out of the front exhaust. By that time, engine pretty much indicates that it's ready to be, fire, to be run for the choke to be open completely. So what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna go ahead and hold on to the choke, turn the engine on, and from there, I'm just gonna go ahead and bring the choke to the center. One more try. reducing it to a small flow by looking at me on the wrong arm right here. This is only one time you gotta do, you just gotta make sure the dripper valve is on. That way you're allowing the water source to continuously travel towards the pump and go away from the pump through that giant heater. So that way your pump system stays cool because the job of the pump is to create pressure, not heat. That's why by having a small amount of water dripping or flowing into the tank, you're getting the garden hose water to continuously travel through the pump and go away. I'm gonna go ahead and I quickly put the top back on. I'm not gonna, I don't have that much time on the video, but I'm gonna show you how to set up the heat, how to turn it on, which pretty much is gonna be, that's what you're gonna do on every job. It all depends what type of temperature you're gonna set this baby up. I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, top back on. If you need to clean your filters, you don't need to remove the, uh, the whole top, there it is. You'll be able to uh, clean them. They normally need to clean up every 100 to 150 hours because they're separated from where the gray water comes in. They do stay clean. This is the report that we get from a lot of these machines sold. So right here, just want to get a, a smooth connect with your um, unions. You do the, we're gonna do the funnel adjustment later. We're just gonna hook them up so they don't wobble. Get this a little bit this way. You can make sure they're going to be kind of snug prior to start up. We're going to come to the front. 
trying to save time on the video we're gonna go and start it speed it up show you how to uh, turn the heat on so your pump should be off at the startup you have already drained your um, airs out of the system uh, the key is off uh, the throttle on the choke on the minimum we're gonna go and turn them on it's next thing uh, next thing uh, uh, you won't be able to hear me but with the movement of my hand I'm pretty much I'm gonna do everything in order so you know how to do the startup you know as as per I'm showing it to you in the video so again to start everything to the right throttle a little bit to the left choke all the way to the left crank open now in order to get this uh, burner to run smoothly your minimum uh, RPM should be 2800 and up. Below 2800, there is not enough rotation on the uh, generator to create enough amperage to get the uh, burner running, which is going to cause the burner to start smoking. So I'm just going to go ahead and increase my RPM about 2800 and up. Turn, them up. turn my pump on, set my thermostat, you'll be able to see the heat production. Use your four finger as a support and your thumb is going to move in it. Pumped out of the system, so keep your pump on. The system is getting cooled off. It goes all the way out, all the way down. This is time to shut up the pump. The temperature is pretty much cool. The body temperature of the regulator is cool. The head of the pump is cool. We're doing beautiful. Right here, we're just gonna go in and shut up the pump. You can notice the pump is off. It doesn't turn anymore. Now, before shutdown, make sure that you spray about five seconds of WD-40 in here, the suction, and to, as far as the complete shutdown, increase the RPM, a little bit high, and then stop. Now, this system, it can be uh, driven by uh, two technician or single technician. Now, you do have two vacuum ports, you can combine them together to get the maximum airflow towards the tank. This is in case if you want to be going uh, long distance. However, you can always run two independent technicians off each. You do have your um, two pressure outlet in the front. 
which you can hook up two tile and grout cleaners, two wands, one wand, one tile and grout cleaner, one furniture tools, one carpet, whatever. However, if you want to do water extraction with this system, there is no reason for you to either hook up the water or turn the pump on. Because after all, if you remember, I told you, the only way you can turn the pump on if the water is present. So even if you happen to turn the pump on, because, uh, if the water is off, the pump will not engage. So anyway, you can run this machine dry without any uh, water connected to it. And once you turn the water on to the machine, you'll be able to adjust the temperature to warm, cold, warm, hot, super hot, and what have you. Again, this was a quick uh, demonstration of this uh, machine, showing you how to set it up prior to uh, first startup once you receive the system. But we do have our technical assistance line is always open, 832-860-4647. Again, I want to thank you for your time today. Allow me to show you your new uh, Inferno, I mean uh, Marine 3047, and I'm looking forward to see you in near future videos.